General Hamster, this is Major Bomb, over. Copy, Major Bomb. What have you got for me? It's a full-on war zone out here. Our men are getting mercilessly slaughtered by the dozens. We need to... We need to persevere and wipe out this alien menace and contain the breach before... Aliens? Forget the aliens. They're completely manageable. I sent your squadron down there to scrub out any alien threat and wipe away all remaining evidence. What in the world could Black Mesa be hiding that's even more powerful than an entire invading alien race? An... an engineer. You're kidding, right? One guy? With a crowbar! Major, I don't pay you to make jokes. Is that him? Oh, oh god, no! No! Pull back, men! Pull back! We need to... Oh god! God! No! No! It's free, man! Oh my god! There's blood everywhere! Don't look back! Just, just run! Run! Oh my humanity! He's disemboweling everyone without even trying! This is the bloody pile of mismatched organs and limbs scattered everywhere! And now he's using someone's leg to paint the walls red with their own blood! Oh, my therapist is so gonna hear about this! This is our first double header. We'll be reviewing the original Half-Life as well as the recent fan remake Black Mesa completed in 2020. There's so much that Half-Life did for the gaming industry as a whole that tends to get overlooked or forgotten. So it's good to see this fan-made project spanning 15 years of development time not only get this much care and attention, but also the official approval of Valve for commercial release. As the positive gamer, it only makes sense for me to focus on Black Mesa and all of the incredible stuff that it brings to the table. And fittingly, as the critical gamer, I'll be examining the original Half-Life and how well it holds up after 22 years. So let's see if this remake was worth the 15 year wait, or if it needs to be smacked upside the head with a crowbar. At first glance, Half-Life is yet another first-person shooter. But upon closer inspection, the game is absolutely bursting with creative decisions that set it apart from its competition. For the most part, Black Mesa uses the same design framework as the original, so these design elements all carry over. Instead of having story cuts and cutscenes, stopping the player and allowing the game to load in new levels, nearly the entire game is fully realized in first person as you run, jump, shoot, and puzzle solve your way around this massive facility. I love how even character interactions are done in real time as you walk alongside NPCs talking to you or telling you about what to do next. If they could have avoided a cutscene in order to make the game feel more real, they did. And it works! Some of the puzzle solving mechanics can be cryptic, but honestly, that's okay for me considering how this game encouraged the players to mess around and try out crazy ways out of situations. I remember feeling so lost and telling myself, this can't possibly be right, before suddenly stumbling upon the next environment. You really feel like you're using your own head to escape a real facility. Let's not forget it's also a shooter, so there are plenty of threats in your way that you will need to eliminate in order to move forward. And maybe I just suck at these games, but this on top of puzzles that can damage and even kill you make this game very hard. Yeah, Gordon Freeman can't climb a ladder to save his life, but the fact that you can quick save makes the whole ordeal of gunning down huge threats and solving tough puzzles less arduous. That quick save managed to get me caught in several death loops where I infinitely spawned into an unwinnable situation and had to back up. That can be frustrating, especially when it was the game that did the quick saving and not me. The game scatters health and armor refill stations throughout the journey, but you'll need to use them wisely so you're always prepared for the next threat around the corner. Since the game is so unconventional, boss fights are few and far between. Instead, with gauntlets of enemies and craftily thinking to escape overwhelming threats taking center stage. Black Mesa, however, adds a great deal in terms of fleshing out bosses and battle scenarios. Gonark in particular had is an amazing multi-phase battle where it violently hunts you down between environments until reaching its lair for a climactic, final, difficult battle. But that testicle crab was pretty underwhelming in the original. 
with significantly shorter phases, basically no variety differences between them, and hardly any HP. Possibly the coolest part of Black Mesa is when you traverse the interdimensional world of Zen near the ending. The world looks, sounds, and feels amazing just to be in, let alone the copious alien life and exploring to encounter along your journey. However, Half-Life's Zen was substantially shorter, uglier, quieter, and less enjoyable of an experience. You jump between awkward, slippery platforming while trying to shoot down the alien threat. It's awkward and a bit of a letdown after all your hard work getting to it. But getting to visit an amazing alien dimension is crazy enough in concept alone to make this exciting. Plus, this gave way to a couple awesome alien and other sci-fi weapons for Gordon to utilize. One of which is the Hive Hand where upon discovering this pulsating, obviously living mass of alien grotesque goop, Gordon immediately decides to cram his entire hand up its anus. Uh, it worked, didn't it? Considering Half-Life came out in 1998 alongside the likes of Ocarina of Time, Metal Gear Solid, and Spyro the Dragon, this game looks pretty darn good. And considering Black Mesa was a 15 year long fan mod of this fossil, it looks pretty darn good too. Now I will still rip on the original Zen for looking like Vortigaunt feces, but it's still incredible how they even got the whole project to even function looking as good as it did. My perfect rendition of this game would be for it to somehow not even have those momentary loading bits where the game temporarily freezes to load in the map ahead of you. Just the thought of playing this game as a constant, smooth, non-stop run is captivating. Though the cryptic puzzles in Half-Life are made even more cryptic by means of the graphics not quite being advanced enough for the player to easily discern what they need to do. Black Mesa does fix that to an extent, but graphically it's fun to watch Black Mesa look more and more polished as you play deeper and deeper into the game considering the 15 year development time. So now what you're saying is we need to start all over again, remaking it to look as amazing as Cyberpunk 2077, and the cycle continues. Half-Life and Black Mesa follow the same storyline from Gordon Freeman's perspective, a physicist arriving late to work in the experimental facility Black Mesa where BOOM! Science happens and a dimensional portal is accidentally opened allowing a neighboring dimension of alien creatures to invade and attack the facility. The game's story is predominantly told through tense horror scenes as you escape, discovering your co-workers being controlled by parasitic head crabs and killed right in front of you in gruesome ways. The military catches wind of the invasion and sends in a heavily armed unit to eliminate the alien threat as well as cover up any and all witnesses. Meaning you. So yeah, you're basically caught between an intergalactic war where both sides want you dead, all because you were a little late to work. Eventually, Gordon catches wind of a theory some surviving scientists have to close the dimensional portal, resulting in them sending him straight into its neighboring alien world called Zen in order to defeat the overwhelmingly powerful entity holding the portal open. The story is not great because of its plot, which I know sounds really weird, but because of how it's told. Absolutely nobody was doing anything like this at the time, where you had full control of your character at all times, combat and character interaction together. It's also worth mentioning how much lore there is to dig into with tons of interesting conspiracies and interworkings inside the Black Mesa organization. Skip to the music section if you don't want to hear spoilers about the ending. And don't say I didn't warn you about spoiling the ending of a 22 year old game, but hey, it's the internet. After defeating the final boss, Gordon is teleported away to a mysterious man in a black suit and is told some very strange things. Apparently the man is very proud of you and your tenacity for survival and thanks you for giving his employer control over the dimension once again. This guy offers Gordon a cryptic job where he can work for this strange dimension hopping creep or die. And you actually get to choose. But what did you disagree to? Is it worse than death? We don't know! You can even see this guy watching you throughout the game hidden in the background. I spotted him once during my own livestream series that you should totally go watch, shameless plug. We just put the livestream plug in the spoiler section. What the heck is wrong with us? This disappoints my... Uh, employers... The music in Black Mesa is undoubtedly superior to the original soundtrack in every way. Ah. 
yeah. Oh man, some of these tracks are absolutely amazing. Some straight up had me dance under the music and others are just beautifully mysterious and atmospheric. Though not bad or anything, the original has many notable sections of gameplay without much music, if any, at all. The final boss fight is totally silent outside of sound effects. What's up with that? This disappoints my ears. The original Half-Life is a tremendous achievement for video games, even though it's got its own occasional clunky problems. But Black Mesa cleans it all up to such an incredible degree that there's little reason to play the original anymore outside of retro nostalgia. Hey, don't give Black Mesa all the credits. Sure, it looks and sounds pretty, but almost all the innovation came from Half-Life. But I like pretty! And Black Mesa sure is pretty darn pretty. The positive gamer in me acknowledges the monumental achievement that is the original Half-Life, yet still giving it a decent 6 out of 10. Though the game's groundbreaking and all, its original doesn't hold up as well as I wish it would looking back. The critical gamer in me disagrees, finding the original Half-Life to be a masterpiece in so many ways that we struggle to even remember a world before its innovations, rewarding it a strong 9 out of 10. Had this game never happened, it's without question that the entire gaming industry today would feel the immense impact of its loss to its own detriment. But the positive gamer in me awards the beautifully realized Black Mesa with a glowing 9 out of 10. The game does so much to learn from and build off its predecessor in so many ways that only help glorify the original so that we could admire it in a whole new light. Reluctantly, the critical gamer in me gives Black Mesa a slightly above average 6 out of 10. Though it polished up a tremendous amount of the original, it still comes alongside with a lot of its quirks from over 20 years ago. This game was groundbreaking back in the day and admittedly looks great in Black Mesa, but in the end it's still just a laborious, though impressive, mod. Well, that sure was confusing. So what did you think? Tell us how your positive and critical sides rate Half-Life and Black Mesa in the comments below. But if you want to pretend that Half-Life didn't massively impact the gaming industry, or that Black Mesa is just a fan mod not worth your time, then, then you're, you're just playing, playing with, with yourself. yourself. Special thanks this week go to Kim for turning my closet doors here into a green screen. Do you have an idea for a new episode of Playing With Myself? It sounds wonderful with this voice, doesn't it? Join the discussion over on Discord using the new Patreon perks to nominate and vote for future episodes. Patreon members also get first picks, so be sure to check the links in the description for more information. And as always, thank you to our amazing employers, Atomic Thomas, Cameron, Arrow, Kai, Ben, Rowan, Erica, Sid, and Denny. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more, and I will see you all in the next video. See ya.